upheld large capacity magazine restrictions since the Supreme Court ruled and that a decision to the contrary would threaten public safety. The judges, appointed by Democratic presidents, wrote, if a stay is denied, California will indisputably face an influx of large capacity magazines like those used in mass shootings in California and elsewhere. Four judges, appointed by Republican presidents, dissented. Could California then employ many groups cheering on the Hamas terror group? For example, you have BLM coming out in support with pro-Palestine messages. What's the connection? Well, this is actually not a new phenomenon. This has been going on for a very long time. And we know from many high-level Soviet defectors, including uh, Ian Pacepa, who was the head of Romanian intelligence, that uh, the communists had a plan to radicalize and, and further inflame Islamic hatred toward Jews, toward Americans. Uh, in fact, Ian Pacepa, in his book, he quotes uh, Yuri Andropov, the head of the KGB, as explaining that a billion Muslims could inflict far more damage on the United States and uh, its allies than just the communists could alone. So they, uh, uh, he actually estimated, Ian Pacepa, that they had sent in 4,000 uh, KGB and communist agents into the Islamic world to radicalize Muslims, to teach them that the United States was the great Satan and that Israel was the little Satan. And, uh, of course, this is a long history in the Arab terrorism directed at Israel. The PLO was actually uh, basically a Soviet front group. Uh, when, when you look at the founding back in the 1960s, in Egypt, they didn't even mention Islam. It was all about revolution and Arab revolutionary uh, activities. So uh, this is not a new phenomenon. Of course, the communist Chinese participated in this as well. And, uh, you know, that's not to completely deny the influence of uh, Islamic theology <laughs> in, in a lot of this, but really the, the communist nexus has been there for generations, and uh, it should be very obvious to anybody who's looking. Uh, of course, the U.S. government has been funding for many, many years, uh, is notorious for producing textbooks that have uh, vile anti-Semitism, that openly call for uh, the elimination of Jews and driving them into the sea. And unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of the same stuff in the United States of America. Um, we're seeing uh, textbooks that portray Israel as uh, as the founder of the Black Lives Matter, Patrice Cullors put it, an imperialist project that needs to be wiped off the map. And of course, uh, this stuff is all um, uh, vile, it's hateful, but it is infecting the minds of young people, not just across the Arab world, but also even here in the United States. And we're seeing this now with growing demonstrations in major American cities, growing demonstrations in major cities across Europe. And uh, I, I think people really do need to understand that this kind of hatred is not natural to people. Uh, it, it is being instilled in them through the deliberate efforts of people who hope to inflame hatred, manipulate that hatred for evil purposes. And, of course, the hand of the communists has been there all along. And, Alex, to your point, we saw 31 student groups at Harvard come out with a letter saying Israel was to blame what's happening there. Now, some of them have retracted their statements following growing backlash. What's your understanding of their motivation? Well, I, I think a lot of socialist and communist groups are quote-unquote pro-Palestine just because that's the default socialist and communist position, not just in this country but around the world. Uh, you see that in, in, in the United Nations very clearly. And so uh, you know, we see this very clearly on college campuses in the United States. These have really become hotbeds of left-wing extremism, socialist activism, communist activism, and uh, it's very, very dangerous. And, and I, I think what happened at Harvard, and this is happening at other major universities all across America, is just the tip of the iceberg. We have a, a growing fervor that aims to dismantle not just Israel, but also the United States, and, and really what's left of the free world, what used to be known as Western civilization or Christendom. Uh, this is an orchestrated attack, and, uh, and I think these divisions and this hatred is being fueled very deliberately and very strategically. And speaking of those divisions, even in the case of Harvard, we're seeing thousands of students, alumni, faculty pushing back in their own letter with all of these divisions we're seeing across campuses and society. How do you see this playing out? Well, I, I think these divisions are going to continue to fester. The hatred is going to be continually inflamed. Uh, and, and one of the things that we see the communists have been trying to do in this country for generations is actually foment division for division's sake. Right? As the Bible says, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. The more issues they can divide Americans on, the more issues they can fracture our population on, the easier it is to take over. But I think what happened in Israel, and, and there are obviously very real questions about how these terrorists were able to infiltrate one of the most secure borders on the face of the planet. Uh, I've been in communication with people, current and former, from IDF, intelligence. 
suggesting that something catastrophic had to have happened here to allow that to happen. This is one of the most heavily guarded borders on the planet. It's filled with every kind of sensor you can imagine. Uh, but all that aside, uh, we have a very similar problem on our southern border, which is not defended at all. And we have now, we know, uh, they, they've been caught repeatedly. I've spoken with uh, some of the top leaders, former from the previous administration on Border Patrol. We've got special operations troops coming in from the People's Liberation Army. We've got jihadists coming in. We've got people who are on our terrorist watch list. Uh, what just happened in southern Israel, I think, could be a foretaste of what we can expect in this country if we don't put a stop to this. And as we've seen with these demonstrations in our cities, there's going to be a major faction of the American population that will likely side with the people who hope to destroy this country. So uh, we are in great danger. Israel is in great danger, and people need to understand that there's so much more going on behind the scenes than what we're seeing and than what's being reported in the media. The Kingdom, Australia, and Canada it was created by Ahmed Yassin and six other Muslims in 1987. It is an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood, an extremist organization that has expressed hostility towards Israel and the West. Hamas stands for Islamic Resistance Movement. The National Counterterrorism Center says it has between 20 and 25,000 members. Terrorist members wear a green headband and the group has both a military as well as a political unit. Hamas's charter calls for the Jewish state to be wiped off the map. Hamas took power in Gaza in 2006 after winning an election that has been contested for its lack of integrity. The terror group is known for using civilian centers in Gaza, including hospitals and schools, to launch rockets into Israel. It also uses civilians as human shields when targeted by Israeli forces. Hamas is known to receive financial and other support from Iran, a state sponsor of terrorism. The Wall Street Journal also reported on October 8th that Iran helped Hamas plan the attacks and gave it the green light to execute them. According to a Foundation for Defense of Democracies report, Iran has built a network of at least 19 armed groups on Israel's borders. The biggest ones are Hamas and Islamic Jihad, based in Gaza, and Hezbollah, based in Lebanon. These groups and others receive funding, training, and weapons from Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Qatar is also accused of being a major supporter of Hamas, and that's where Hamas's leader, Ismail Haniya, currently resides. Qatar denies these allegations. Daniel Monahan, NTD News. To decide just that. Two California bills want to prevent employers from discriminating against employees for using cannabis. If approved by the governor, one of these bills, Senate Bill 700, will make it unlawful for employers to ask employees or applicants about prior use starting January 1, 2024. Existing law already states that it is unlawful for most employers to discriminate against a person's former use. Bill author Senator Stephen Bradford said in a bill analysis, quote, Last year, the legislature made it unlawful for an employer to discriminate against an employee in hiring, termination, or conditions of employment because of a person's off-the-job cannabis use. SB 700 explicitly makes it unlawful for employers to request information from an applicant relating to their prior use of cannabis. SB 700 has until October 14th to be signed or vetoed by Governor Gavin Newsom. The other bill, Assembly Bill 2188, authored by Assemblywoman Shannon Quirk Silva, has already been approved by Governor Newsom. The bill will also take effect the beginning of 2024. AB 2188 prevents employers from discriminating against employees using cannabis off the job. The law states that employers can still test for cannabis. They can then decide repercussions if employees test positive, indicating current impairment. This follows California's historic trend of legalizing cannabis. It was the first state to allow medicinal cannabis use starting in 1996. More is the sixth generation to live on tribal lands in Mendocino County. But what normally would have been safe places to live, they are now being taken over by cartels. He tells California insider C.M. Karami how rural California counties are being taken over by illegal marijuana growers. And in that Compassionate Use Act of 1996 that codified 11362.5 that said you can have medical marijuana, that's where we saw things shifting. 
and all of a sudden, a lot of people showed up who did not have a 50-year plan to raise their families, be good people, take care of their neighbors. A lot of people showed up with a two-year plan to make as much money as they possibly could, not care about the environment, not care about their neighbors, and uh, it came with a lot of violence. It came with a lot of violence because of the money involved. <clears throat> At one point, Kendall said there were eight to 10,000 illegal grows in Mendocino County. You can see the things that have gone on in Mexico uh, with intimidation, with uh, cartel wars and things like that. And that's what we're beginning to experience here in the United States, and especially in these rural areas where I've got two deputies working the north half of the county in a county that is 3,500 square miles. I have six deputies on per shift to cover and patrol 3,500 square miles. Kendall has all experienced poisons that are smuggled up from foreign countries, mostly from Mexico. If you poison a rat with it, um, then the rat is eaten by a coyote and the coyote dies of it. And then the coyote carcass is uh, eaten by a bear and the bear dies of it. These are the types of things that are just ruining the country. I had a deputy who was exposed to it and spent a night in the hospital. There's also a huge health hazard just being near the grows, as he and his department noticed strange cancers after deputies were exposed to them. Had upheld large capacity magazine restrictions since the Supreme Court ruled and that a decision to the contrary would threaten public safety. The judges, appointed by Democratic presidents, wrote, if a stay is denied, California will indisputably face an influx of large capacity magazines like those used in mass shootings in California and elsewhere. Four judges appointed by Republican presidents dissented. Could California then employ...